I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thanks for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we're going back to our Microsoft Access playlist. We're going to take a look at query definitions, which are essentially the queries that you see when you open your Access database and you're looking at your tables and queries and things like that. Each of those queries has a query definition. And what I'm going to show you today is how to programmatically create query definitions on the fly which is very, very handy when you've got all kinds of things happening on your form and you need to change the SQL for a query, you can do that. And I'm going to show you that now. Let's get to it. Okay, so query defs is a pretty fun uh, topic. And uh, essentially, we're just using the same database that we used for our previous episodes there. And uh, we've got our work hours table. And what we want to do is we're going to uh, automatically create a query uh, based off of this table um, and we're going to use code to do that um, as you saw in previous episodes we use table definitions um, to do certain things and in this episode we're going to use query definitions uh, which are uh, sort of like the complement for the uh, table definitions so you've got tables and queries and you can uh, change the design and update design via code and so what I've done there is I've gone to the create ribbon and I created a new uh, module uh, just to demonstrate this um, this code and uh, I'm going to start a new uh, subroutine I'll just call it create my query and I'll put a comment in just saying this creates a new query def uh, in the database and so sometimes it's easy to create query defs you know um, by you know using the wizard or you can you can uh, use the the grid or or you can write sql directly into the sql um, uh, the sql screen uh, but sometimes it's nice to be able to create query defs in your program on the fly so that you can have something to either redirect a report to or you can redirect other queries to and you can change it on the fly so that um, so that it's very uh, handy that way. So I've created three variables uh, dim db as database, dim uh, strsql as string, and then I've dimmed a qdf as as query def. And what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll set my db uh, equal to current db just to reference the current database that we're working in here. And then I'll, I'll set up my sql string to be exactly sort of what I want this new query def to be. And so <clears throat> I could do something like, um, you know, select star from work hours where date worked is between a date range, for example. And I, you know, I want that query def to be um, set to that exact uh, query for some other purpose. And so I can do that by setting up my SQL string and then we'll uh, go ahead and we'll create our query def. And uh, once we're done there, uh, we can go ahead and uh, we're going to um, set our query def equal to a new query def so that there's a new one that's created. Uh, we can't set it to one, uh, we can't just say, you know, set it equal to query def. We're actually going to set it to a new query def. Uh, and then we're going to append that query def onto the uh, database. And so I'll say set QDF equal to new query def, and then I'll, I'll set the SQL. I'll say QDF.SQL equals uh, our string, which is select star from work hours, as you see above there. And I'll give the, I'll give the new query a name. Um, so I'll say QDF.name is equal to my work hours uh, query, say, something like that. And, and then that sort of gives us something new that's in, in memory in a query definition. And we can go ahead and we can uh, actually append that query definition. Um, we can go db.querydefs.append and then just put QDF there uh, as the argument. And that's going to append that query definition into the query defs collection uh, on, of the database. And, uh, it's good to make sure to close it after. So we'll say qdf.close. We're going to close that and that'll save it. 
um, and then we'll set QDF equal to nothing just to clear clear up our our um, resources and then so we've got our our new query it'll be called my work hours query which is set with the SQL string we created uh, we created a new QDF um, or a new query def in that line there and then we appended it onto the uh, query desk collection connection uh, collection there and then we closed it and then we're good to go so from there uh, then on in we're good to go um, I can move this uh, over here and we should see we'll see our new my work hours query uh, up here in the list on the left um, I may have to refresh that list but we'll run it um, so there we go I've run it um, the code executed and now if I sort of refresh it by changing slightly the filter there you can see my work hours query is there and it's got all of the dates in March just as we set up in our uh, in our uh, str SQL and now that's going to be a persistent query definition that'll be there whenever your application is opened or running um, and you don't have to remake that uh, particular query um, you can just refer to it or select from it and that makes it very very uh, nice uh, for uh, applications when you've designed applications and so one of the nice neat things that we can do is we can uh, now we can look at that query definition I'll use the immediate window here which is where you can put in immediate commands to run against the database and I put a question mark to ask for what the value is of current db .query defs my work query sql and you can see I've uh, I've selected it or you can see that it was printed out there below I'll, ex I'll I'll update this a little bit here hang on I'll just expand the immediate window here so you can actually see it there we go so there's our uh, my my uh, work hours query and that's the SQL that we put into it with our literal dates there uh, with the hash marks around them and so that's a static uh, query that's in the database it could be you know something from your application have you know something that's completely different and uh, this is where we set here so the, the qdf.name is my work hours query and uh, so the second thing that we can do is we can change a query definition uh, by looking at the same objects just a little bit differently and so what I'll do here is I'll, I'll change the query definition that we just made and I'm gonna give it a different SQL string uh, with some pop-up um, parameters so that you can choose the date range instead of having a static date range in there and so just as we did before we've, we're using uh, DB strsql and QDF and I'm gonna set uh, DB equal to current DB um, that's not totally necessary you could just say current DB dot and you know uh, without the uh, reference but I find it's cleaner and easier to read um, when you set that variable and we'll set our strsql equal to uh, select star from work hours where uh, date worked is between and let's let's give a, a parameter value in there instead so that it'll ask us for the date when we open the query so in this case I'll say between this date and that date and uh, that will give me a parameter pop-up um, that'll ask me for this date and that date between which I'll get all the records that I am making a query for. So we can set that <clears throat> QDF equal to db.querydefs and, and this time around when we're editing we're just going to set it to the query def by name. We'll say db.querydefs my work hours query and then we can um, from there we can set the SQL we can just say qdf.sql equals strsql and then uh, we can uh, qdf.close will close that and uh, and then we can set qdf equal to nothing release that resource um, same with the database uh, uh, variable and then we're good to go so now when I run this it's going to open that same one that we created the same query definition it's going to change 
the um, the query string is going to have uh, this date and that date pop up when that query is executed. So I'll go ahead and I'm just going to run that. So I'll just run that on the toolbar and that should have changed our query definition. Um, so I'll go ahead and minimize the code window here, the IDE, and now I can just double click on my query in the list to, to execute it. And you'll see it gives me a parameter for what is this date. And so I'll say 4-1-2019 and for that date I'll say 4-30-2019. I could also put in ISO uh, dates in there. And uh, you can see now it's given me um, query responses between those dates or records between those dates. And the nice thing is I can change that to be whatever I want from my data, uh, whatever, uh, whatever date range I want. So I can change to November and uh, that's going to give me uh, all of my dates in November which is exactly what I want to see and uh, <clears throat> and that's uh, that's a very very uh, handy way of doing that and like I said before you know you can go to your your immediate window and you can you can uh, look for uh, various uh, values so you can get the SQL from the query by asking for the query def uh, SQL um, and make sure uh, if you are doing that you can put in your current db.query defs uh, but you do need to have that question mark in front because that is asking for a value and that is how you can programmatic programmatically create a query def in VBA and Microsoft Access. Want to check out some additional content on this topic? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description.